Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, I'm planting out again, and this time it's the turn of the cucumbers, the summer and winter squash, and hopefully, if I've got time, the melons. Now, very often I will drop a couple of cucumber plants in kind of random locations and just leave them to sprawl along the ground. The sort I'm talking about here are the old fashioned ridge cucumbers. Traditionally grown outdoors though, sometimes I, I have also set them out in our polytunnel or in the greenhouses and they're absolutely fine growing in there. But I want to get a couple of these planted outdoors today and because I'm a little bit short of space in the borders now, I'm going to tie these in to the trellis here. This section of trellis is spare, there aren't any trees growing up this so that's perfect for the cucumbers. Oh, what's not perfect is the rain. Well, I apologise if there's going to be noisy weather on this video, but I'm going to work through this anyway. Now I set these dwarf beans out in the spring and yeah, well they're, they're doing fine here. Um, but there's a little bit of space where I can plant between them. Now what I've got here are two kind of classic ridge cucumbers. This one is the more modern variety. This is market more. And well, you may just be able to make out there are even some fruits forming on this already. These have been held back a little bit longer than perhaps is ideal, but I didn't want to plant these out until conditions had really warmed up nicely. Um, in retrospect, I probably sowed these uh, a week or, or two weeks early, but well, they've been well protected and they're happy in these fairly large pots, so I don't think it's a problem. The other variety is rather older. This is Long Green Ridge, and well, it'll be interesting to see how this old variety compares. This is a nice cucumber. Um, I will put that one, I think, over there, there's some spare space, and I think I'll get market more in between these two plants here. Well, that's a pretty good looking root system. Um, I had expected this to look a little bit pot bound, but this isn't bad at all, so pretty pleased with that. I orient this in a sensible sort of direction. Now, I'm not going to plant that too deep. I will leave that just mounded up slightly here. There's always the risk with all of these sorts of plants that you can get rots around the stem, so it's a good idea to plant those in a little bit of a, a, a mound or a, or a hill. Yeah, that should do nicely. And now I can start to tie this plant in. These tendrils will eventually grab hold and cling on to the wire here, but until they do, I shall put a few ties in place to keep it under control. Yeah, that'll be great. Now, at some point, these will produce side shoots. Well, there's the start of one here. Um, and I will probably take a few of those and, and tie them in alongside. Um, but once it gets too big, I can pinch out excess side shoots. Well, this is not the finest piece of soil in the garden. Hopefully the cucumber can get down into this and do something useful. Oh dear. Got a few stones to get out here. Crikey. And again, we've got a fairly good root system here, so I'm rather pleased with these plants. Oh, that's a little bit too deep.
Yeah, that will be fine. And again, I'm just tying these up with a little bit of jute twine. I'm leaving these quite loose because these stems will potentially swell up quite a bit as the plants are developing and I don't want to strangle them. You might just be able to make out the male flower here. You can always tell the males and the females apart because the females will have a small sort of embryonic fruit behind the, the flower whereas this one does not. So the flowers that are on here at the moment they're all males and it's quite common for the males to appear before any of the females show up. Now when I planted out the greenhouse cucumbers I mentioned that I need to take off the male flowers to prevent pollination um, because pollination of those will produce rather bitter and unpleasant fruits. It's completely opposite with the outdoor, the ridge cucumbers uh, in this case, you should leave the male flowers on and let it do its thing. At the moment, there are no female flowers on, on this particular plant. I think they will come maybe in a, a few weeks' time. Now, I've got a few different locations where I'm going to put some winter squash. The main spot that I had in mind was this border here but then I reserved part of it for leeks and up the other end I've got my seed sown onions so I've taken up half the space already. So I'm also going to plant some vertically up a, a little bit of trellis and there are a couple of other spots I might put some and then I'm going to put some on our dirty compost heap. So that's a compost heap that is outside of the kitchen garden. Actually we, we only uncovered it when we renovated this area. A, a digger came through and removed a whole load of rubbish and uh, we found a blockwork bay which was probably, probably a manure heap once upon a time. And so we've started filling that with um, stuff that I don't want in the compost in the kitchen garden. So that will be lots of grass clippings which are full of weeds we don't have a nice lawn here but but we've got lots of grass but it is full of weeds so that will be full of weed seeds and and then any bad weeds that we we take out anything with um, dodgy roots or, or looks a bit seedy all of that goes in the dirty compost heap and we've only just started building that up but I think there's enough there to make some use of so our, our plan is to um, plant winter squash probably just winter squash, although I could drop a melon or two on there, I've got plenty of those as well. But to plant those in the top of the compost, let them root down into it. So I'll cut the bottoms out of the pots that they're in and sit them there and they can trail over the side and we'll get some more squash that way. Winter squash are one of those things we really do like and, and they're so versatile in the kitchen that it's a really good staple through the winter. I've got two sections of the border here that I can still use. If I was being sensible, I suppose there's only really room for one plant in each section, but of course I'm gonna put two. And I will have to be a little bit careful with managing the stems later on as they, as they develop. I can always pinch them out and I can coil them round to prevent them just running wild. So here I'm going to set out one Delicata squash, two Walden butternut and the big one at the end is going to be a Blue Hubbard. So here's one of our Blue Hubbard plants. I've got a couple more that I will set outside on the dirty compost heap. But this is a bit of a monster. It's already in a seven and a half litre pot. It, out, it outgrew its um, four or five litre pot that it was in before. It's covered with male flowers here already and there is one female flower here. 
So as I mentioned with the cucumbers behind the female flowers you can always see the embryonic fruit. So we've got one female and then lots of male flowers here, there's no sign of a fruit behind these. But these male flowers will typically open first. This one may not set, the, the first female fruits on the plants often don't set and it'll be, it'll be some that are produced later on that will produce some viable fruit. But this is a really big plant so I'm going to have to coil these stems along on the ground and, and I can peg these down into place over the top of the stem and they will often root down at these nodes along the stems and provide a, a secondary root system and so that, that's not a bad thing to do anyway. Sometimes I've grown these through um, membrane to keep weeding down and then sometimes I've grown them just on plain soil as I'm doing this time and in this case I'm able to pin these stems down to the soil to keep them under control but also potentially to get some additional roots. I think I might set that more or less towards the corner here. Now I wouldn't always add any extra feed when planting these. This bed had a really thick layer of horse compost on the top. You can still see the darker remains of the organic matter um, sitting on the top here. Much of it's been taken down by the worm population, but I think at least for this monstrous fellow, I'm gonna add a, a handful of fish blood and bone into the planting hole. Put back a little bit of the soil give that a really good mix in. And then we'll see what sort of root system this has. Ah, well that's ideal. It's starting to fill up this pot, but it's uh, by no means pot bound. That's absolutely fine. And that's the right sort of height. Now I'm going to take some of these older leaves off. They're in the way and... Uh, And again, I've set that just slightly higher and I'll just mound the soil up around the, the stem there. And that should be perfect. And now we've got this stem heading in a sensible direction there. So yeah, that should start off reasonably well. In the opposite, corner I will set out one of the butternut squash just take those seed leaves off the yellow and useless now That's four of the winter squash in. They might be a little bit tight here, two per section, but I should be able to manage it. And if it all goes wrong and they start trailing all over the paths, it's not really a problem. They've done that 
many times before, so I will just live with them rambling around. This bed here was originally intended for brassicas, um, but when I went completely overboard on shallots last autumn, I had to rearrange the planting scheme. So this one is going to have sweet corn later on, and it's going to have some summer squash and winter squash here. Now, we don't need too many courgettes. Two plants is more than enough for us. Two plants is great early on when they're just getting going. And then later in the year, actually, one plant would probably be plenty because they are really prolific. Because I don't have any more bed space, I'm going to grow a couple of these squash vertically up this reinforcing mesh. So I banged in a couple of posts pretty deep into the ground and probably unnecessarily I've also braced it with a couple of canes. Um, I could probably dispense with these but better to be safe than sorry. Now ideally this would be rather longer and then I could sensibly put two squash on each side but I need the rest of this space for sweet corn later on. I think I'm still going to put two plants on each side. They might be a little bit crowded and later on I can always pinch one out if need be and, and just have just a few fruits on each plant. But I think maybe it's better to have two in here on each side anyway in case one of them fails later on. On this side of the fence, I'm going to set out two delicata squash. Again, just a little bit of fish blood and bone in the planting hole. These beds were also mulched with horse compost in the winter. It looks like they're in pretty good condition. Yeah, that will do. So that will do nicely. Now there's nothing to tie in here yet. The growing point is down here, so it'll be a week or two before I need to tie this one in place. Yeah, that will be fine. Again, I'm setting these higher than the surrounding soil a little bit. And mounding the soil up around them. This one's grown a lot more than the other, so I do have something to tie in here.
So these are a courgette, Striato di Napoli. It's a really nice courgette actually. And if you like the fruit small, it's very nice. But if you let them grow sort of marrow size, they're also pretty good quality marrows. They don't get too wet and they don't get too bitter. Um, now I will be planting these as usual, a little bit closer than is ideal. They can also hang over the edges of the bed a little bit here. That's not a problem. Now I'm going to have corn at the end of that bed, so um, something like that should be okay. Wow, they've got a lot of nice root there. It's probably a good time to be planting this out. It's not too pot bound, but it's looking pretty substantial. I'm very happy with that plant. Looks quite healthy. It's covered in flowers. Um, of course, at this time, these are all male flowers. Again, I don't want to set these too deep. I'm less concerned about these than I am about the the other squash, but I think that will be that'll be fine. So with the courgettes and the winter squash planted here, this should be a productive little patch. The soil looks to be in really good condition, so hopefully they will establish well and grow on quite happily in this spot. Well, I do have a few more squash to plant out, but they will probably appear a little later. So that is all for this video. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.